My guest today is Whitney Donaldson and her son, Kellen. Whitney is about the sweetest person I've met in a very long time. She just exudes positivity and optimism and light. I discovered their story after a video went viral of she and her family at a Keith Urban concert. And I'll show you that video later in the show. She is here to spread awareness about her son's medical condition. He has defied all the odds and all of the things that the doctor said he would never do, he has done. She is here to share his story and to hopefully teach us all to not judge anyone by how they look on the outside and to be kind to everyone we encounter. Thank you for being here, Whitney. I know you've had a lot of interview requests and people are very taken by your story. So thanks for making the time to be here. Uh, we'll talk with Kellen a little later in the show, but again, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having us. We're excited to be part of this. So let's go back to the beginning. I know from the sign and from knowing of your story now that Kellen wasn't expected to be able to walk or talk. And obviously he can do both of those and many more things than, than were anticipated. So can you go back to the beginning to his diagnosis and what you faced, the challenges that you faced early on in your pregnancy? Absolutely. So at 20 weeks, we actually were informed that his ventricles were enlarged um, by our regular OB GYN. Um, we got sent to maternal fetal medicine at 23 weeks, um, where they actually confirmed a diagnosis of Dandy Walker syndrome, which is where you're actually missing a vermis in your brain. And with that, um, they told me that he would not walk, talk, or lift his head, be a veg almost like a vegetable-like state. And so with that, um, they gave me one week to decide if I was going to continue with my pregnancy or what I was going to do next. Um, ultimately, I obviously chose to pursue with my pregnancy, but it was a very hard decision. I was 23 years old and was like, oh my gosh, but I wanted to do the best thing that was obviously um, for my child. And so I took uh, 48 hours to cry um, process and I decided we're going to do it. And if we're going to do it, we're doing it. So, um, every appointment after that, the, um, they were always like, you're so yeah. happy. You're always so positive. And my biggest thing was, yes, like I'm not going to cause any stress to myself because it causes stress to my baby. And we're not doing that. Um, so you so understood I, very early on that that decision wasn't just through your pregnancy, but you were going to try to carry that throughout your life. You, you made the choice and and you wanted it to be a positive thing. Absolutely. And I had just graduated nursing school and I thought, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to figure it out because that's what you do in life, right? Life is not always the uh, sunshine and rainbows. Sometimes there are really hard days and really hard paths. And, and we, I chose that decision that I'm going for. We're going to do that. Let's and talk about that for a moment, if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> you said that you just finished nursing school. I do a lot of, um, I have a lot of conversations with people who are navigating healthcare and health crises and so many of them who are in the field of medicine say, oh, I had no idea what I was doing, even though I was, I'm a doctor or I'm a nurse or I'm this or I'm that. So did any of your education prepare you for this in any way? Mm -hmm. she That's what I not, hear a lot because it's completely different when it that. happens to you. It is. And you're going in thinking, okay, yes, I'm taking care of my patient, but it's not personal, right? So, you know, as a nurse, you kind of, I don't want to sound heartless, but you kind of disconnect. Not that you aren't connected to your patient, but it's not your own family member. It's not your own life. So you can kind of disconnect from that. And when it's your child, you can't disconnect from that. And that is totally different. And I was coming with a diagnosis. Um, ultimately, that was a misdiagnosis. But I'm thinking, okay, they're having me meet a neurosurgeon and talk about brain surgery surgery and they don't teach you about brain surgery in nursing right. school right right and so I'm thinking oh my Atlanta I don't know what's going on and it was it was 100% a whirlwind um all through my pregnancy Kellen loved music every time I listened to music he would go crazy in my stomach and just kick me to death and I was like you know, I just feel like the doctors are so wrong because every time, you know, one doubt would come into my mind, he would just start kicking like crazy. And I'm like, you're proving to me that you are already defying all the odds in this diagnosis. And so um, he was born at 39 weeks. Um, and actually during labor is when they actually found out that he had what they call an encephalocele, which is a hole in his skull, um, which was actually causing increased fluid in his ventricles, which is called hydrocephalus. And so 
ultimately- It wasn't the diagnosis that you were told at all. Correct. And um, ultimately with the hospital that I had, they told me, oh, he's going to be with you. He's not, he may not even have to go to the NICU. Like we're going to kind of just see how things go. Um, and they really didn't know what an encephalocele was or how to take care of it. And so they were actually going to give him a bath. They put a hat on him. And when they showed the neurosurgeon, like what was going on, he was like, take that off. That can rupture and he could die. And wow. so they sent him to um, downtown, um, he was born in Kentucky, and they sent him to downtown um, Norton Children's in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and I was like, I'm signing out AMA or you're sending me to the hospital because they were trying to take my baby away. Um, so we spent um, six and a half weeks in the NICU down in Kentucky. Um, at eight days, his pressures um, in his ventricles increased and that caused them to go in and do double brain surgery. So they removed the encephalocele, which was the hole in the skull, um, closed that up, and then they put in what they call a shunt, um, which is behind Kellen's um, right ear to drain off that excess fluid. Um, we ended up staying, like I said, for another six and a half weeks where they told me he's not going to walk. He's not going to talk. He's not. So even that was walk. in addition. So the diagnosis was wrong. And that diagnosis, they told you that he'd be in a vegetative state. Yes. If he survived it. And then the new diagnosis, they still said he won't be able to walk and talk. So it wasn't like this new diagnosis kind of freed you up to have hopes that you hadn't had yet. But again, he was kicking around in your belly. So you knew he was going to walk if he was, gonna, <laughs> he wasn't not going to be moving. That's for sure. He um, moved 24 seven. And I yeah. thought this has got to be wrong. Yeah. So then he has the surgery and they warn you of all the things and, um, but you're still in it. You're, I mean, obviously you made the choice and, and what was that like for you then when he was born six weeks, I've spent six weeks in an ICU for a loved one with a loved one. And it is grueling. It is. Um, it's not for the week. It's not it's for the week. And you're a nurse even still. Uh, so you you have spent six weeks in a in a setting as well, even though it was now this is with your your child, the patient is your child. So what did you what kind of coping skills did you develop that you didn't know you had? Um, I was terrible at them. I will be very honest. Um, postpartum is real. It's a real thing. And you talk about putting yourself in a NICU for six weeks, four and a half hours away from your family. Postpartum is very real. Um, it was very depressing. It was very trying. Um, when I say that I was below my pre-pregnancy weight real quick, um, I, I meant that. Like I eating, trying to, to process all of it was a lot. Um, but again, it was about him and he came out of double brain surgery. They're like, he's going to be on a ventilator. He came back on room air smiling. And I thought, okay, if you're this tough, I need to learn to be a lot tougher. <laughs> well, and I, I would assume too, you probably get to a point where you just tell the doctors, Hey, let's not keep guessing. Let's yes. just let him be the little boy he's going to be and quit giving me the numbers that you think are going to be our numbers and our statistics. Yes. And working in healthcare, I tell people that all the time. You can throw every textbook at me and read me my diagnosis, but you, nobody divide, you can't define a diagnosis. Like people are going to do what they're going to do. You can try to refrain them and put them in this box, but they're not they're not a textbook. They are humans. They're going to be odds all the time. We see it every single day. And so it was extremely frustrating as a new mom um, that they kept telling me he's not going to do this. He's not going to do this. He's not going to do this. And I'm just like, I just want to leave here because I just want to be able to show you that he's going to do all these things. And so, you know, we've had our challenges. I'm not going to tell you we haven't had challenges, you know, lifting his head was a big challenge and it took a lot more work because, because with the hydrocephalus, his head is, you know, unfortunately a little misshapen. It is taller. It was heavier. There's things that did play a factor, but it was constant therapy. I mean, um, he got out of the NICU at six and a half weeks by 12 weeks. We had moved back home. Um, my mom is also a nurse. So, uh, we kind of team team worked, uh, on Kellen. Uh, we got him into speech therapy, feeding therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy at three months old. They were, you know, they were already you know, doing those things and he didn't sit till he was, you know, eight months. He didn't. So there were some developmental delays, but nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Let's take a quick break and when we come back. Let's talk more about where he is now and how you feel he got to that point. 
and how he has defied the odds. And then we'll get to that really special video, how I discovered your family in the first place. Me and I don't know, a couple of other million people. So we'll be back in just a moment. We're back talking with Whitney Donaldson. Uh, we're talking about your son, Kellen. Uh, one of the things that we're going to show the video here in just a little bit of how um, how well Keith Urban treated your family when you were there at his concert and just how exciting it was for you and your husband and your son. Uh, and like I said, a couple of million people watched the video. Let's talk again, uh, finish up what we were talking about in terms of Kellen's progress and the milestones he reached despite being told he wouldn't. And then also let's talk about um, just your family dynamic and how that's come into play. So he then, you said it took him a little longer to sit up. It took him a little longer to do these things. His The weight of his head made things harder for him. Uh, what Where were the, so where were the um, milestones that you thought, oh, okay, things are going to be a whole lot better than we think? Um, honestly, I think when he was like two, so they, he, he actually started doing some extra therapies and he started going to a chiropractor and before the chiropractor, he would not bear any weight on his legs. And that's when I was like, okay, maybe the doctors are right. You know, I can't get him to, to bear weight. And we started going to a chiropractor and we went to a, a therapy that I had never heard of before. And it was recommended by one of his therapists called a Nick Bonial in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And it was like a no touch therapy. And he came back and he started bearing weight. And I thought, okay, we're starting to pull up. We're starting to cruise. We're starting to do all these things. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm worried about these things, but I'm also seeing so much progress that, okay, we're going to be okay. We are well, going to be The thing okay. too is, um, you know, in your field of work as a nurse, but also just in terms of your, your role as his mother, you talked about the therapies he was in within a couple of years, a couple of months old, um, all of those resources pulled together, even one of those missing parts, he might not have had the success. So good for you for seeking out what he needed and making sure he got it. Cause I'm sure you were met with opposition. If doctors are telling you he wasn't going to get any better. Yes, uh, we were. Um, but like his therapy team was fantastic. Yeah. And then, you know, at home, you also had to do extra therapies, you know, it's not just, okay, this is supposed to, you know, you Three have hours a week work. won't do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, um, we started doing those. He started cruising. Um, I actually then met Chase, which um, adopted Kellen two years ago. He's been a part of our life for the last five years, um, but he officially adopted Kellen two years ago. And he was kind of pushy, but a good pushy, right? So <laughs> he would rope a, or take a rope and string it across our living room and force Kellen to pull up and stand on it, to work on core strength and balance. He would tie his tablet to a door handle to force him to stand up and then work those legs. So, you know, all these odd therapies that we use to, you know, be beneficial. And so, you know, another downfall was that the hydrocephalus has caused vision issues. So we've had multiple um, eye surgeries, the last being a cornea transplant back in April. But, you know, when he started to walk and start to take those steps, the vision did play a factor because if you can't see, it's, you know, sure. where getting your balance and you already have poor balance because of your diagnosis. So that played a factor into it. Um, but, you know, Kellen has proven over and over again that this might be a tall mountain, but I'm still going to climb it. And I'm going to come out on the other side of it over and over again. Um, I'm not gonna tell you there's not hard days because there's days that I'm like, Oh, but you know, a sobbing mess because I feel like everything's going to be not good. Um, but he proves over and over and over again that there's so many good days and it's so worth all the bad days, you know, that have come with that. So, you know, Kellen started walking at three. He started talking about a week later. Um, and by four years old, he was, what was his people. first word? Oh, you know, I think it was mom. I honestly don't remember because for a long, long time, it was really hard to even understand right. because they were, you know, it was such a delay. Even today, there's, there's still speech delays. You know, we still work on those things. Um, there's times where people are still like, what did he say? Now I know everything he says and he yes. talks, you know, yes. nonstop. You speak but his language. <laughs> Yes, yes. It took a little bit though, because it was at first you're like, okay, what is he trying to say? But he learned mom pretty quick and he learned dad pretty quick after that. It wasn't, you know, too far apart. Let's okay. talk about dad for a minute uh, before we go to break. Uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, single parents who face challenges with their children, whether it's a physical challenge, emotional challenge, whatever these challenges are. 
And I can see the picture of your um, of Chase there in the background. Um, there he is. And so what was that like for you? Had you had hope that you'd find a relationship of, with someone who'd be accepting of it? Or how did that? Let's give him some um Let's oh, give him some he, time. Yeah. <laughs> he gets all the credit. I will, I will claim that. Um, I was terrified. I was a 24 year old single mom of a special needs child. I thought who is ever going to want to be with me? You know, I'm going to live this life by myself. And I kind of had accepted that, um, even though it was scary, you know, um, strangely enough, I met Chase at my brother's wedding. Um, he, he was, he fell in love with Kellen before he ever fell in love with me. He came up, was like, your son's so cute and grabbed him and went to the dance floor. And I thought, who is he? Who is that? And I need to know him. And so, you know, he reached out to me on Facebook a few days later. And honestly, the rest was history. Like he, like he, I said, he fell in love with Kellen way before he ever fell in love with me. And, you know, five years later, here we are. And, um, things are, things are great. Mm. Two years ago, like I said, he decided mm. to adopt Kellen mm. and hold on, I'm speaking. Um, and he chose to, to, you know, adopt Kellen and it was kind of strange. Kellen never called him dad. And then the very day that he adopted him, we didn't really tell him what that meant. He was like, dad. And I think it melted Chase's heart <laughs> hearing for the first time. I bet. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, I want to show, um, the video uh, from the concert with Keith, Keith Urban, and then we'll make sure we've, we've seen Kellen now, but we'll, we'll introduce him to everyone. We'll be back in just a moment. Kellen, from one uh, Keith Urban fan to another, I just want to thank you for being on my show today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So were you excited to go to the concert? And you, I hear you've been a big fan of Keith Urban's for a couple of years now. Yeah. Do you have a favorite song? Yeah. Which one? The new one. The new one. What's it called? Street Called Maine. Street Called Maine. That's our newest favorite. Yeah, I've never been to a Keith Urban concert, but it's on my list. It was so much fun, wasn't it? Yeah. He, he rocked the house. Well, you will definitely say that. A couple of million people were really happy for you. <gasps> did you know that many people saw you? Yeah. What did you tell me? I said, Kellen, you're famous. And he said, I've got to tell my friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, Kellen. I know you're going to go and do some other things right now. So I'll pause and then your mom and I will keep chatting, okay? Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, I was fun talking with him. And now he's like, I'm over this. Let me go uh, look at my iPad or do something else besides be on television. But I'm glad to still have you here. Let's talk for just a few more minutes. We just have a few minutes. But you really are um, excited about the awareness this has brought. And this really a national worldwide platform that you have now to speak based on everyone seeing this video, the concert, which we'll show at the end of this, at the end of the show. Yes. So, you know, as a parent, as a special needs child, my, honestly, my biggest fear of posting the entire video was like, what if people are mean? What if they say cruel things? We, you know, sometimes live in a, we live in a cruel world where people are very mean. And so posting it was terrifying, but the, all the feedback and all the positivity and all of that that I've received is so heartwarming. Me and Chase talk about that all the time. We're like, okay, it's so nice to see how much awareness this is brought to a diagnosis that doesn't get a lot of awareness, unfortunately. And so, you know, for parents that have children that are special needs, or they don't look, quote unquote, the way people want them to look, you know, we've talked to Kellen, and we're going to continue to talk to Kellen that, yes, you're okay to, it's okay to be different. He goes to a Christian school and the very first Bible verse his, he learned was God made me special like no one else you see. And if I can't tell you that that didn't make me cry, I, I don't know what else to tell you because that is the truest statement is you're not going to look like everybody else and you're not going to be like everybody else, but that's okay. You know, we don't have to be like everybody else. Be yourself, be happy, and, you know, for the world be kind, just think about your words because words hurt and they can be so, you know, devastating to parents and to kids and all these things. And just remember that, you know, positivity goes and kindness goes so far and 
you don't know everybody's story. Well, and it's learned at home. It's learned. We teach our children anything that they learn uh, about prejudice, about judgment, about um, how they see people who they think might look different from a very young age for the people who are watching this. It is up to us as the parents, as the leaders in our family to make sure that they do learn empathy, that they do, if they're curious to ask polite questions of us or, you know, in a situation, because sometimes it would be better than, you know, staring or making fun, obviously, to just, to just be honest and have that, have that dialogue. Absolutely. I can't agree with that more because um, Kellen goes to a tumbling gym and a little girl said, does he have a bug bite on his head? And I told her the whole story. And she's like, that's so cool. And so to me, it's like you said, asking questions. I'd rather you ask me than look and be like, what's going on with him? Just ask me because we are an open book about Kellen and his diagnosis. And we will tell you that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I'm super happy that we got through this whole <laughs> 20 something minutes because Kellen's been a dream. He's been uh, really cooperative with our conversation and, and everything that's gone along with it. So um, we're going to show the video that um, that went viral, that the whole world has seen, millions of people have seen it. And I'm just really grateful to have this time with you and to get to hopefully help spread your message of acceptance and empathy and making sure that we're kind to all people. You're right. We don't know people's story. Even if someone looks perfectly normal, we can't know what their day is. But for example, you having, you know, be navigating this situation, you might have a really rough day and no one knows your story. So if we're just kind to everyone, it does go a long way. So thanks for being here, Whitney. Uh, Say hi to Chase for me. Sorry, I didn't get to meet him today, but I know he's working and thank Kellen again for being such a good sport during the show. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. And thank you for spreading our Kellen story and awareness as well. Take good care. Yeah. Hey, man, where are you from? Monticello, Illinois. Monticello, Illinois? In the house? Is that mom? I've got it. Hi, baby. What's your name? My name is Whitney. Whitney. How you doing, Whitney? You good? I'm doing good. Nice. And what's your name? Kellen. Kellen. What's... Oh, my God. Yeah, Kellen. Kellen. That's a beautiful name. Kellen, how you doing? You doing good? Oh Man, you're rocking the guitar up here. I see this thing going on. I this is all blinged thing. out. Do you want me to sign this for you? Oh, yeah? yeah? Okay. Woo! Okay. We love you, Keith. You should be taking still pictures. Oh you have... Yeah, why aren't you taking pictures? I'm taking a picture. Hang on a second. What'd you say? I said when he was born, they said he would never walk or talk, and now he knows all your songs. Oh he loves you! Oh my God! Oh. Oh. Amazing. We love you, Keith. Love you too, baby. Man, I'm so glad you're here. Hang on to this, because you're going to have to shred with me. There we go. All right.